friends just chilling in my recliner and it came to my mind after my last lesson that um, lots of people right now at this time of year are getting ready for auditions auditioning for a good seat in the symphony uh, or maybe you're in competition like my student was and she did really well by the way she came in second in her division and at the end of her lesson she mentioned that well her mom mentioned that that she was you know still learning how to deal with the nerves so I came up with um, just kinda came up with 14 tips for you when you have kind of performance anxieties okay and some things that you can do before your performance and some things you can do during your performance that will help you deal with nerves Now everybody gets nervous everybody has nerves before a performance I mean you're going out and you feel judged you know right off the bat you 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 feel you fear humiliation you fear rejection that's just in our nature as human beings but um, these tips will help you so the first thing of course you know is going to be to practice and be well prepared in your in your musicianship so you've got to get that work done and hopefully you're practicing correctly and we've got there are a lot of videos on my channel about how to do that um, the, the second thing is right before your performance on the day of your performance eat light don't eat too heavy don't drink of course but I'm talking about kids mostly uh, to uh, to get rid of the nerves and to alleviate nervousness pasta is a good thing a good choice because it's a carb so it's high energy it'll give you quick high energy and it's light so it's digested kind of quickly and uh, you know don't eat something that you know is going to upset your tummy like a, a greasy hamburger or um, you know f eat too much like fries in a hamburger or something's probably not a good thing to eat before your performance you can do that afterwards okay so no alcohol no caffeine just pasta light not too much and um, just eat the carbs you know and 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 that should help kinda get rid and the other thing is see pasta is good because it absorbs stuff that makes that if you're nauseated or feel like you're gonna throw up it makes it less likely that you'll do that so pasta anything with carbs like that okay um, and also I want to recommend and this is this is the way we are I mean okay I'm gonna say it you have to be aware of your bodily functions you don't want to have to go to the bathroom you know like right before uh, your performance you don't especially I mean you don't want to have to pee or something so drink lots of water the day before you know get yourself hydrated that's number three I'll just count that as number three get hydrated but also in relation to what you eat and what you drink regulate so that you know when you're gonna to need to use the bathroom and then maybe right before your performance you can go pee even if you don't feel like you have to so that you don't have that distraction during your performance okay number four before your performance the day before or days before pick out what you're going to wear and practice what you're going to play wearing what you're going to wear during your audition or your practice or performance so clothing can cause all kinds of unexpected issues your violin can slip on certain materials it can be really too hot your button can rattle some buttons or pins or jewelry or something can rattle up against the violin so plan to take off all the earrings the jewelry you shouldn't wear any of that stuff while you're as a violinist anyway just modest button earrings okay if you're gonna wear them but nothing dangling um, you know rings bracelets that's out take all that stuff off and check what you're going to wear if it has buttons or something put it on see if it's going to cause you any problems and you know it'd be really good if you could go to the place where you're going to perform so we'll add that in 
So try out the space if you can. You know, practice beforehand. I mean, symphonies do that. Symphonies practice where they're going to perform all the time. So uh, if you're going to do an audition or um, do a performance or a competition or something, try to try to go there early and you know see if you can get in there and maybe pr play a little bit. That would be ideal anyway. Take every opportunity you can to perform for other people before your performance. So days and weeks before, play in the most uncomfortable places. <laughs> So I'll tell you this little story. You probably already know my daughter's an opera singer in Oklahoma. She's really, really talented. But when she was about eight or nine, maybe younger, she said she wanted to do this as a profession. And I said, look, if you want to be a singer, you must sing. So if you want to be a violinist, you must play. So wherever we went and in the most impromptu places, I ordered her, basically, ordered her to sing. And she did. And she's a very shy, introverted person. But she's very modest. But if you get her in character, she can sing anywhere. And that's because I made her do it when she was young. And so we went to the dentist. She sang. <laughs> we went grocery shopping. She sang. I mean, anywhere I could think of that, oh, this is a good place to put her on the spot, I did it. And she came up learning how to deal with those nerves, sort of, you know, in just any last-minute spot. So if you can play for your friends, play for family, get somewhere where you might not, you know, feel really comfortable, but play for people as much as you can. Play in church, you know, play for people in your youth group or something. In any group that you're in, ask the leader if you can play for them. That you're, pre that you're preparing for an audition and you just want to play for them. Warm up. Do a warm up. Don't go in cold for goodness sake. Go early. Look for a place, private place to warm up. Do a couple jumping jacks. Get the blood flowing and drill the spots that are, that you know are challenging. You know, get them under your hand. So the, the object is to eliminate any surprises. You know Murphy's Law, right? Murphy's Law states that anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So what your job is to do is to preemptively prepare yourself to deal with any unforeseen problems. Uh, so if you go in early, you'll be warmed up, you'll be more ready to play, you'll kind of have an idea about the atmosphere, and um, that kind of goes hand in hand with actually getting in the space, if you can, but if not, like I, I played for my daughter's senior recital, and you know, that was kind of stressful, really, because uh, she, I wanted her to do a, a good job, and so... Um, when I went in there, I just went not on the playing in the playing space, but the pra a practice room right beside it, so that I played right there and I had that space kind of in my mind, and I just walked in with her. So, do do the best you can as far as getting near and warming up. Part of being prepared is that you always have an extra set of strings. I mean, a violinist's worst case scenario isn't that you would break a string during the performance. Uh, but you need, that's the first eventuality, isn't it? So always have an extra set of strings, or you're done. <laughs> you're done, you know. Check all your stuff the night before. So whatever you need to take, like, for example, what comes to my mind is playing a wedding. Okay, so I've got to think about, the, the probably, because the wedding party doesn't think about any of this. A music stand, is it outside? Take clothespins so that you can pin your music down when the wind blows. The clothing you're going to wear, uh, trim your nails the night before. Um, your music, make sure your music, your violin, clothes, any snacks, water. I mean, think, try to think of everything. And, you know, days before that even, you can be make a list of everything that you'll need. So that you don't arrive there having to perform and think, oh, no, I didn't bring such and such. You know, so this is 
this is part of the performing art is getting prepared that's part of getting ready so bring all that stuff and then finally wash your hands just the moment before you perform you know gauge it so the time so that you can go in and have your violin ready and then go wash your hands so you have nice clean hands they won't be sweaty you know some people when they get nervous their hands start to sweat so you know wash all that off and then you'll you'll have a better time of it okay and then along the lines of this is the next one along the lines of eating and and staying hydrated that's really important because a lack of water being dehydrated plus stress you can get dizzy you can actually get dizzy and faint okay so you want to kind of plan out your hydration the day before and the morning of drink lots of water but you don't want to drink a lot right before because you like I said you don't want to have to use restroom while you're performing you don't want that distraction but you want to stay hydrated because for me I know when I played in the symphony my big worry was coughing during a really quiet spot that was just you know my thing and everybody has their thing about their when they get nervous so my mouth would just dry up so you need to gauge what your symptoms will be and then plan ahead so that you you know that you will be able to maybe hopefully alleviate some of those in advance and hyd staying hydrated is like essential for everybody no matter what um, okay now hopefully this goes without saying too but whatever it takes get a good night's sleep the night before you know and you should probably have rituals some kind of ritual whether it's warm bath boring book doing a little bit of exercise whatever it takes to get you sleepy make sure that you get a good night's sleep because you don't want to be tired and kind of run down and un not rested while you're trying to give it your everything okay so make sure that you are rested uh, go to bed early and here's the thing as you fall asleep I want you to envision yourself in the playing space auditioning the music I want you to think through every measure of the music playing it humming it in your mind as you drift off to sleep in it, thinking of yourself as playing it in a you know very well okay now the weeks before your audition it's really helpful if you will listen to your pieces and your audition music find it on the on YouTube and you know listen to it as much as you can you should be able to sing it really in your mind well not even in your mind you should be able to sing the pitches even if it's not in tempo okay and if you are in a spot where you can't practice with your violin you can still do mental practice and you can just do the sequence of the fingerings for example in a tough spot you can think through it so do mental practice when you're away from your violin when you're riding in the car uh, anytime that you're you know not able to actually practice you can use that extra time in between a lot of people are on the go and even on the way to the performance if you're not driving practice listen mental practice or listen on your cell phone okay all right so this one is a toughie and it's really important and it's it's really difficult for someone who's like 13 to do this but we grow up thinking that our self-worth is attached to how well how we play how well we play and I, I hear even adults say this maybe I'll be good enough you know someday or something like that you are good enough you're good enough okay what well, it's how you play maybe you don't play well okay but you are good and so I would like us to change our thought processes just a little bit in that regard so that we are not making comments about ourselves that diminish our self-worth as it relates to how well we play violin it's a total separate issue so that when you fail if you do 
you're still, you know, you still have self-love. You still still have self-esteem. You still are able to get up and go to the next audition or to sit where you, you know, were placed and you didn't get maybe the concert mistress or master or something. And, you know, you can still enjoy your musical experience. So separating your self-worth starts with just changing the things that you say. Let's just start with that. So we're not going to say things about you. We're going to say about things about your playing. Okay. And when you, it's the same as when you go into, uh, you know, your music lesson, if you have a teacher who says, you know, that's a little out of tune or your bow isn't straight. It's not about you. This person, this teacher doesn't like you any less. She, he, or she is just stating facts about your playing. So let's try to separate those two so that, you know, you can understand. It's how you play, not you and your worth as a person. So enough of that. Enough on that. And here's a real big one now. Everybody has that voice in their head that warns us about that tough spot coming up or even says something negative like you're gonna blow it you can't do this I don't know why you're even trying this is too hard for you okay these kind of th fear kind of, kind of related uh, comments need to go so you need to push back on that you need to make yourself override those negative voices or voice, that negative voice in your mind with positive comebacks. I can do this. I can, I've practiced well enough. This part is easy for me. I'm going to succeed. And say those things in your mind over the negative things. And even more important, you know, you can do this before the performance or the audition. Okay, so this is what happens when you're playing in a performance or a, or a, a audition and this voice enters in what that voice does is totally blind you to what's coming next so it's it's almost like and you may have experienced this but it's almost like blinders coming over and you can't even see the music now because you're so worried about the rejection and the humiliation uh, that this negative voice is going to give is giving you so we need to override that every time. Every time a negative thought about your playing enters your brain, what you're going to do is just think, no, I can do this. Then you're going to pull your mind straight back to the music because these are things that, these are thoughts that take your focus away from the page. So you have to push them, push them out just like a little bad kitty cat. Out the door you go and get your mind back on the music. Okay, so this is the point, and it's, it's something I really want you to give some thought to, and that is that, that you're a messenger. This performance and this audition is not about you. It's about the music. It's about your message. You're giving a message that someone else wrote. That's why performance practicing is so important because you want to do it exactly as Bach or Beethoven or Debussy or whoever intended it. It's not yours. And so you want to convey it as well as you can. All right? So don't make it about yourself. Eliminate those thoughts. And remember that you are, it's all about the music. You're just the messenger. You're just going to give a message to the audience and that is the music the music the music so don't care about what anybody thinks about what you're wearing or if the, you made a mistake 10 measures ago forget it you've got measures ahead now so it's mind on the music keep your mind pulled back keep pulling back pulling back to the music your focus on the page don't look at the audience. Look above the audience, okay? Don't make eye contact and look all around because any expression on somebody's face is going to just feed that negative feeling and fear 
people are going to be rude. They're going to talk. Babies are going to cry. Somebody's going to cough right in the middle of your beautiful, quiet section. They're even going to get up and walk around or come in the door late. It happens in live performances. So you have to just go on, stay so focused, and it would be fun if you could maybe play a game, like have someone try to distract you while you're playing. That would be a really good practice. I mean, cell phones go off. The lights are going to be hot if you're on a stage. Uh, you may be uncomfortable in your clothes. Um, your nose may itch. You know, I mean, all these things happen. You might need to sneeze even. So, I mean, think about all those things, and you need to stay focused. So, it's good to prepare for that kind of thing. And as your as your mind wanders, pull it back. Pull it back to the page. While you're performing, and you're going to have a lot of experience auditioning and competing and playing in your orchestras and ensembles, you're going to experience nerves. Sometimes it's going to be light, and sometimes it's going to be intense. And you, now you have some tools to deal with that. And a lot of it is mental. You know, if you can just control your mental state a little bit, prepare physically but and musically, but control your mental state a little bit and override negatives with positives. And then during the performance, recognize your symptoms. Don't try to ignore them like they're not coming on. It's just like a wave running toward the uh, shore. It's going to crash. It's going to go high and it's going to come down. And it's the same way, for example, with me and my cough. Let's say I would, uh, during symphony, I would dry up. My mouth would just totally dry up. And I would fear, I would just live in fear that I would cough and distract from the music. And so what I, what I suggest in that uh, case is that you just, okay, you feel your mouth drying up a little bit. So you recognize it. You just acknowledge it. And you say, okay, my mouth is dry. So I'm going to wiggle my tongue inside my mouth or whatever and try to get some saliva in my mouth. Uh, or let's say my heart is pounding. And it's almost like a mini panic attack, you know. Well, when you have panic attacks, and I have, not about music, uh, most panic attacks come, you know, unexpected and you don't know what the heck's going on. But a lot of times uh, a fast beating heart, heart palpitations, what happens is it feeds the, the fear, and then you get scared, and then your heart beats more, and then you get scared of the heartbeat, and it just kind of feeds itself. So what I want you to do, whether it's a panic attack, it really, or just, you know, a rush of adrenaline right before the performance, because that's what it is, remember that it's natural. Just kind of detach from being in your physical self, and detach and know you're okay. You are okay. And your brain is giving you a signal and it's saying you're in danger. That's why your heart pounds like that. Uh, or your mouth dries up or you get kind of nauseous. Um, remember to acknowledge it, then breathe, then make a plan for when that happens again. And you can calm yourself down that way. Just breathe deeply, you know, kind of mentally say, acknowledge it, say, I get the message, I hear your message, It's a, I'm okay, this is going to go well, I know it is, and breathe deeply. So guys, I know you're going to do well on your auditions, and with these little tips, I want you to know, you're going to be okay, and now, you're going to know what to do with those nerves. Now, if you have other symptoms or other solutions, I hope you, you'll share that with, the, with our community in the comments section. I would love to hear what you do, how, you know, what happens to you when you get nervous and what do you do about it. And I would also like to hear from you if you uh, have tried any of these things that I've mentioned and they've helped you or how, you know, how, what the results were. So good luck. Love you guys. Talk to you soon.